Well, good morning. You know John Ross is happy, right? See, John wants Lent to be shorter. Four day, 40 days is too long, and so since we're doing ashes today, we just shortened it by about four days. Not a bad start. <clears throat> At the Hackett House, we, of course, were hoping for lots and lots of snow. I mean, the kids have had their sleds out since last Sunday, ready to go. And, uh, well, a whole week out of school, we didn't see that coming. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, it might have been the best thing for us. might have been the best thing for us. See, someone in our house has been sick since November 2014. (laughs) And that means we've gotten further and further behind in just daily living. Lately, we've always been behind. We're constantly rushed. And then last Saturday, it was Valentine's Day, but an amazing thing happened. We had absolutely nothing on our calendar. Nothing. And of course, being Valentine's, the hopeless romantics we are, we started cleaning our house. <laughs> but not the normal cleaning, right? It started, we start tackling things that had gotten away from us. You ever do this? The things that just you kind of put away? And we have this one closet. It's a walk-in closet that we use for a little bit of everything. Well, last Saturday, we cleaned it. And we threw a lot of stuff that we didn't need, we threw it away, stuff that we wanted to keep, well, we reorganized it, and it just got back to where it was supposed to be. I can't tell you how rewarding that was. And last Sunday, I was sharing with Josh, wherever Josh is, I was sharing with Josh in Sunday school about how wonderful that experience was. Now, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something to me that I remember. He said, yeah. Uh, Cleaning out things, organizing, it's very rewarding. I think it speaks to a deep place in us and represents a reordering of our lives. Now decluttering, reorganizing, cleaning is not all we did. We do have three little boys running around, so I got to sit down and teach them how to play Go Fish, a very long game. And when we were able, we got outside, we got on our slides, slid around outside on the ice, we listened to music, we watched family movies, ate a bunch of snacks and hot chocolate. See, we did it side by side. We enjoyed the rewards of both, the work of getting our lives back on track, and then also the reward of just daily living, just living. See. Today, we're going to do the ashes, right? And I think people come to church to get these ashes smudged on your foreheads. I think we do it for a variety of reasons. Some people have that old tape recorder in their mind talking about God is out to get them. Better cover yourselves in ashes like they did in the Old Testament. Well, I hope that's not you. I hope you don't think that God is really out to get you because this isn't really about condemnation. Rather, maybe there's some other reasons to come. See, I know everyone's in a different place right now, right? But you're all here in this church right now about to get ashes. Take a moment to think about where you are. See, maybe you're in a good place right now, actually. Maybe you're healthy. Maybe your loved ones are healthy. Everyone around you is doing well, prosperous. But still, there's something deep inside you that you need this, this reminder of our mortality. Or maybe you're not in a great place right now, and you don't need to be reminded of this fragile state of our human condition. You know it all too well, and you're grieving. You're really grieving. See, I'm lucky. I get to experience this a bit in my job. As a priest, one of the privileges that we have is to get to go to the hospital to visit people. One time, when I first got here, I was new to the collar, didn't know all of you, and I went to a hospital, was going to go visit a family, and I went into the room, knocked on the door, is this John's room? Yes, went in, sat down with them, started talking, come to find out I was in the wrong room. (laughs) I didn't let on. (laughs) They were very nice. The uh, gentleman was getting very sick, and uh, they ended up Methodist, but the daughter was Episcopalian, so there was some kind of a connection there, and they thought that I was there on purpose, and I just went with it. (laughs) And we prayed and prayed, and we had a good time. They thanked me very much for coming by, and I went home and hugged my kids so hard. 
told my wife I loved her. You see, that's the tension I'm talking about. Mortality and celebration. I hope you can find somewhere in your life that you can feel that this Lent. I challenge you, pay attention. They're there side by side, side by side, mortality and celebration. Amen.